Today is Harvest Thanksgiving. Tomorrow is the holiday of Thanksgiving in Canada. In November, it's the is it fourth Thursday? Third, third, fourth Thursday in November in the United States is Thanksgiving. We get to celebrate both. Giving thanks is more than just important. It's more than just something which helps us, makes us feel better, makes other people feel better. Giving thanks, nurturing a thankful heart, taking time to stop and just enjoy and say thank you, it's our secret weapon. It's our secret weapon. Because when Jesus is talking in this passage, he's not saying that you don't need to worry about food because nobody's hungry. He was talking to people, some of whom were hungry. When Jesus talks about don't worry about what you wear, he wasn't talking to people who were all middle class and above. He was talking to poverty-stricken people. He was also speaking to us in Western Europe in 2024, who tend to have closets full of clothing that we haven't even looked at in years. Jesus is very blunt. Tomorrow is going to bring worries. There are problems. There are tragedies. There are issues. There are traumas. And yet, in the face of that, Jesus says, do not worry. I am watching you. Do you see the birds and how God cares for the birds? Do you see the lilies and how beautiful they are? Without using Buff BuzzFeed's list of the 33 best skincare products, do not worry. In a world where we find, I should say that in a movie voice, shouldn't I? In a world in a world where we find so much worrisome, where there is so much worrisome, choosing to step out of that cycle, choosing to nurture a discipline, and it is a discipline, it takes commitment and practice to say thank you, to nurture thanksgiving, is vital for our well-being and the well-being of the world. Let me explain. There's an old movie from the 60s called Shenandoah. For those of you who don't know what the Shenandoah is, the Shenandoah is a series of valley systems in the state of Virginia in the United States, and it is gorgeous. I know England loves to think of all their passage, their their pastures and their high green hills, I guarantee you Shenandoah can put any of them to a challenge. It's beautiful. Rolling hills, rivers, mountains, orchards everywhere, horses, it's, it's gorgeous. And in this movie Shenandoah, it follows a family run by a patriarch played by Jimmy Stewart. They run a farm, very large farm, the movie is set just following the Civil War, when people were trying to get back up on their feet. And they sit down on a Sunday for the big family meal, so all the sons and daughters are there, and one daughter is there with her brand new fiancé, new to the family, new coming in. Family doesn't know him so well. And he's a little bit nervous getting to meet the family and what am I doing here? And they sit down to say the blessing and Jimmy Stewart, as the father, the patriarch, asks them all to bow their heads and he says, Lord, we give you thanks for this land and this food in front of us. I don't know why, because I worked the land, I tilled it, I fertilized it, I planted it, I harvested it, I helped make it, but thank you anyway, amen, let's eat. It's a very funny scene. It's also very real. How often do we forget to say thank you and instead rely on what we can provide for ourselves? 
How often do we forget that, yeah, we might work the land, but the land is given in the first place. We have the strength to work the land. We have money to buy what we need. Most of us have enough and even extra. And yes, we work hard for our living, but we're able to work. And sometimes we forget the basics of how much has been given to us in this world. And that's why something like a feast day of harvest thanksgiving is really important to stop and think about everything that God has given us. It's good for us to give thanks. It does something to our heart. When we stop complaining, when we stop comparing ourselves to other people, when we stop looking at how much we don't have or how we were mistreated or what that person did to tick us off, when we stop to look at what is good and beautiful, our heart changes from being angry and bitter to being thankful, yes, but also to being more giving. I guarantee you, people who are the most generous are also the most thankful. You cannot have one without the other. And so when we give thanks, it changes our heart, but it is good for everybody else too. Jesus can stand there and say, do not worry about what you will wear, because he knows that God is taking care of them. He knows that not a single bird falls without God taking notice. The Psalms tell us when we cry, God literally collects our tears in a bottle because they are so precious, because it hurts God. God takes note. God watches. And God moves to protect, to guide, and frankly, to get those of us who say we believe who say we understand the generosity of God, who have more than enough, God moves us to get up and do something. The reason in the early church they lived in community and they shared is because that's what we are to do. My car sitting outside is not my car. The clothing on your back right now is not your clothing. It is God's. Everything we are, everything we have, everything around us that is good or beautiful or nurturing or comforting, all of that is provided by the goodness of God. And yes, we worked for it, but thank God we can work because not everybody can. So when Jesus looks at this crowd and says, do not worry, it's because Jesus knows not only is God caring, but surely those who believe will also care and not let a brother or sister go hungry or in need or unclothed. When we give thanks, when we acknowledge the providence of God over everything, when we stop claiming things as ours and instead view every bit of life as something to be shared, to be loved, to give thanks for, we tend to open up and be much, much more generous. Do not worry because God is watching you. Do not worry because God has people who know me. And they do right. Giving thanks changes our hearts. Giving thanks changes those around us. Giving thanks can help solve whatever issue is going on in the world. Please. Look me straight in the eye. Pick a war happening right now and tell me that that war would be happening if everybody involved, if the leaders involved were just thankful for what they had. Tell me that war would be happening. Because it wouldn't. 
giving thanks is so important. How many people here are familiar with the name? I will say it with the American English pronunciation first. Cory ten Boom. Cory ten Boom. Unfortunately, I think not a lot of people, as time goes on, knows about Cory ten Boom. You can go visit the house in which she was raised in Harlem. I highly recommend it. Cory was raised in a Christian family, lived in a house in Harlem above the family shop, watchmakers, clock repairers, lived upstairs. And when the Nazis invaded, they hid people. They hid Jewish people. They hid a radio. They hid fake passports. They hid food um, coupons that people could use in their own house. They built a false wall. They practiced drills day and night. Their entire life was turned upside down, not only because of the war, but because of what they chose to do in their household. And they would sit down every night at their table with their new family members, and they would give thanks in the middle of this horrible situation because they were together, because they had lived another day, because they could offer help, because they had something to eat even if it was just a piece of bread. And then they were betrayed. And the entire family was rounded up and taken to a concentration camp. Every single one of the people they were hiding got out escaped. Corey was in a camp with her sister and they were doing their bedtime prayers and Betsy was saying we need to give thanks and Corey was saying heck we do. <laughs> it's awful in here. We're sick and we're hungry. You've got TB and are dying. There are lice and bugs and they beat us. What do we have to give thanks for? And Betsy said we're together. together. All the people got out. We did what we set out to do. Jesus lives. There's hope. Let's say thank you. So they took a moment and they said thank you and then Betsy said we need to say thank you for the bugs. At which point Corey laughed in her sister's face. Bed bugs, lice, roaches, ants. Betsy said, we need to give thanks for the bugs. So Corey, in a very grumpy mood, said, thank you for the bugs. Can we go to bed now? That night, someone in their room became very, very ill at the point of death, and they had to call for the guards the same people who beat them. They had to call for them. And the guard came right up to the door and wouldn't enter because of the bugs. The one place where they were not beaten, the one place where they were allowed peace, the one place where they could sing. The guards might yell at them from the doorway, but they didn't come in because of the bugs. In the midst of an absolutely horrendous situation, there was a tiny space for fellowship and prayer and hope. And yes, it was terrible. But giving thanks kept them strong, enabled them to help those around them even in the camp enabled them to keep putting one foot in front of the other, enabled them to talk about God's goodness in the middle of hell. Giving thanks changes us, it changes the people around us, it changes the circumstances we are in. And to be clear, because I hear this verse misquoted all the time and it makes my skin crawl. To be clear, nowhere in scripture does it say give thanks 
for everything. Nowhere in scripture does it say, you're being beaten, say thank you. Let me read the verse for you that people often misquote. First, Thessalonians. It's a book not many people read quite often. That's why I think this verse gets misquoted. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God. Not for all circumstances. In. And sometimes when we are in the deep place of pain, we cannot humanly give thanks. That's when it's time for the community to gather around, to help, to listen, to provide physical support, to provide food and drink and clothing and care, and for the community to give thanks on behalf of the person who cannot. It is time for the community to say, thank you, God, that you're still here in the midst of this hell that we are going through. Because that's what we do in the strength of Jesus. Do not worry about what you are going to eat or drink or what you will wear, for the Father knows you need all these things. Give thanks. Do not worry about tomorrow, for by worrying can anyone add even one more hour to their life. No. When we see, when we experience, when we are the victim of war, degradation, abuse, death, we grieve, and we grieve fully. And we stop, even if it's only a second, and we say, thank you, God, that you're with me right in the middle of this hell. And those of us who are not in that hell, who are capable of being very, very thankful, we step up and we make sure that indeed they don't need to worry about food or drink or who to go cry with or support or what to wear because we understand how very good God is and we understand that that goodness is too big to keep to ourselves. It's too big, it's too much, it's too beautiful. We share it. This week I was speaking with our oldest, and uh, Evan said, you know what I was thinking about the other day, Mom, just randomly? I was thinking that you've seen, you've been with a lot of dead people, haven't you? I mean, more than the average person. Yeah, I do, I do funerals, I go to the hospital, I have been with a lot of dead people. Yeah, but you're actually there with people when they're dying quite a bit, too. I mean, you know, more than the average person. Yes, yeah, I am. Yes, I am. And I will tell you from 30 years of experience that the people that I am with at their deathbed who have regrets, their regret is never that they didn't work enough. Their regret is never that they didn't buy that sports car. Their regret is never that they didn't have that piece of jewelry. Their regret is always that they didn't spend enough time with their family, that they didn't tell someone how much they meant, that they didn't say thank you, that they didn't share more. And the people I am with who are at peace, they might be frightened thinking about what's going to happen. They might be sad that they're dying, but there is a peace underneath. And those people, those people are always people who were quick to give, quick to share, quick to put down the work and spend time with someone who just needed someone to listen, quick to offer a helping hand. And the reason they don't have regrets is because they said it 
They told that person they loved them. They said sorry. They tried to do their best to make something better. Do not worry today about tomorrow because tomorrow is going to have worries enough of its own. But God is with us. And God wants to use us and use our thankfulness to reach out, to share, to change our church community, our neighborhood, and the world. And yes, a simple thank you has the power to do that. I want you to take a moment, close your eyes if you need to. I want you to think about whatever is going on right now that is worrying you. This could be something personal, someone else, school, work, living, whatever it is. And I want you to search and see is there where is the thing to say thank you for? Is it the person who listened? Is it the fact that you feel a little bit better today, that you had breakfast? Is it the sunshine and the wind? Are you thankful because you're actually not sitting here with something to worry about? Now, I invite you just to breathe in a big, deep breath full of God's goodness and giving us air and life. And as we breathe out, just say thank you. And my recommendation for today for this week, for tomorrow, for next month, is to repeat this as often as necessary.